In this video, using Apple Motion, we're gonna build a powerful split screen effect for Final Cut Pro. Now, this video is not sponsored, but it was massively inspired by Brett FX's amazing splits to split screen effects for Final Cut Pro. Cannot recommend them highly enough, so make sure you check out the link down below for that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and build this inside of Apple Motion. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut effect. I'm gonna recommend you set your duration to something like 10 seconds and go ahead and leave your frame rate and preset at whatever you typically like to work with. From there, we'll push open. The first thing we of course need for a split screen effect is a divider. So to get that, let's go into our shapes by clicking on this down arrow and find the line tool. I'm gonna push command minus to zoom out a bit. Then I'm just gonna click and drag and hold shift to create a perfectly straight line. Now this line is going to be the driving factor of a mask which reveals the underlying effect source. So to achieve that, we'll need to go over into our library, locate our generators, then locate the color solid. Click and drag that color solid directly into this group and I'm just gonna place it under the line. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this color solid to mask. With the mask layer selected, go on up into your behaviors, go down to basic motion and select align to. The align to parameter is extremely powerful because we can use it to lock one object to another object. To make sure everything works really smoothly, go ahead and select your line, go to the inspector, go to properties and locate your position parameter. Let's make sure that that Y position is set to zero so it's perfectly centered in our project. Going back to that align to parameter, go ahead and drag the line into the align to parameter. You'll notice that this has adjusted the position of our blue mask. What we want is for the left hand side of this mask to be attached to wherever this line is. So to achieve that, we'll find the align mask and it's currently set to center. Go ahead and adjust that over to the left hand side. And so just like that, anywhere we move this line, that mask is going to move with it. Now, one other thing I recommend is go ahead and select your mask, go into the generator settings, and we wanna make it so the width is a little bit wider than this 3840 value. So I'll just click and drag directly on that to increase it up just a bit. That way, if we happen to move our line off of the screen, our mask will not completely disappear. So now that we have this mask set up, let's go ahead and apply it as a mask. So to do that, go ahead and locate your effect source, right click on it, and then select add image mask, which can be achieved with command shift M. From there, we can go ahead and click and drag our mask into this drop well. And you'll instantly notice that our mask is now cutting out wherever that mask box is. So if we move this line back and forth, you'll notice that our mask is being adjusted likewise. So that's pretty cool. And we could definitely just go into our properties and publish our parameters like the position if we wanted to. That way we could make adjustments inside of Final Cut Pro. But I think there's a way to make this so much easier and so much more powerful inside of Final Cut Pro by using some parameter behaviors. I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this group to be our split group. Then we can go ahead and collapse that group for right now. Next, we'll go back over to our library, locate our generators, and we're gonna add another color solid. I'm gonna just click and drag that above everything. And let's go ahead and rename this to be OSC, which stands for on-screen controls. Going into our inspector, I'm just gonna adjust the color on this, just so I can quickly see what this layer is doing at a glance inside of my layer inspector. However, I'm gonna go ahead and just disable that group so there is no visibility on it. With that OSC layer selected, we'll go over to our filters and go down to distortion and select black hole. You'll notice that I've added this black hole effect and it's given us this position parameter that we can adjust on the screen. This is known as an on-screen control. What's really cool about motion is we can publish this parameter over into Final Cut Pro so that we have full control over wherever this is on the screen. However, as it is, this effect is not linked to the position of anything inside of our scene. So to go ahead and attach this reticle onto something in our scene, we'll need to go back over into our split group and locate our effect source. Going over to the properties of the effect source, we can find the position. Click on this arrow on the left side that will expand everything and right click on the X value. Go down to add parameter behavior and select link. From there, we can go ahead and click and drag our on-screen control directly into this well of the link parameter. You'll notice that motion automatically assumes that we want the properties transform of this on-screen control, which is driven by the X and Y value. And while that does move things, that is not being driven by that reticle from the black hole effect. So 
To change that, we need to go back to our link parameter and find the compatible parameters list. Clicking on that, we can go down to filters, black hole, center, and X. So now we've just told motion that the center of this black hole parameter, which is our reticle, needs to drive the position of our effect source. However, you'll notice another problem. Now our effect source is over here on the right side of the reticle and not directly centered up. That is because when this reticle is directly centered, if we take a look here at this parameter inside of the black hole, the center parameter, you'll notice that the X value has a value of 0.5. So we need to offset that particular value. To do that, we'll go back to our link parameter and find the X offset here at the very bottom. Let's go ahead and set that to negative 0.5 and now we have just offset that. So what we have done is our black hole parameter is now driving the position of our effect source, which is super cool. But the link parameter actually gets even better. Clicking on our link parameter, we can go over to this mix over time parameter. Right now it's set to custom mix. So you can use that custom mix as an animation tool, but what's even cooler is clicking on that, we can find this ease in and ease out parameter. This is essentially going to automatically animate this parameter for us. Selecting that, you'll notice that the mix time range is set to 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag the black hole parameter over here to the right side, and you'll notice that my effect source has not yet moved. But if I were to push play, it auto animates over to that position in 10 frames. Going back to that link parameter, I'm gonna change the mix time range from 10 all the way to 60. So this is now 60 frames long. So pushing play, it now takes a full second for my effect source to get over there to the right hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to be OSC position. This stands for the position of the effect source. Next, we wanna have an on-screen control for our line. So with our on-screen control position parameter selected, go ahead and push Command D. This is going to duplicate that. I'm going to reset that parameter so it's directly in the center of our screen. Then I'm going to rename it to be OSC line. From there, we can locate our line and locate the X value. Right clicking on that, we'll select add parameter behavior, we'll select link, we'll drag the on-screen control in, and again, it's trying to use the position value rather than the reticle. So we'll change the compatible parameters over to filters, OSC line, center, and X. Then once again, we need to offset that with negative 0.5. And we also want it to be animated. So we'll change the custom mix over to ease in and ease out. And we'll set that to a value of 60. So it takes 60 frames. So if we push play, we can see that there's a nice slow animation there happening with our split screen. But we want this line to appear from off the screen. To achieve that, go back to the very first frame and select your line. Finding the position parameter, we can go ahead and just click and drag that all the way until it's completely off of the screen. So now if we push play, you can see it is sliding from off the screen onto the screen, giving us a really nice smooth animation. So not only do we have control over where our effect source is landing, but we also have control over where this on-screen control is for the line. Now something that is super important is we wanna make sure that these reticles actually appear inside of Final Cut Pro. To achieve that, go to the bottom of each of the parameters and you'll locate this publish OSC. That means it will publish it over to Final Cut Pro. Go ahead and click to enable that parameter on both of those. Now, as it is, you could easily take this over into Final Cut Pro and apply it as an effect onto your topmost clip, then use the regular transform tools for the underlying clips inside of Final Cut Pro. But I wanna take this a step further so that we have that smooth animation not only happening on the topmost layer, but also on the underlying layers. So the first thing we need to do is adjust this mask because we don't want this mask to be affecting the layer that is underneath. Go ahead and select your image mask, then go to the image mask settings and find the mask source parameter. Clicking this down arrow, select add to rig, create new rig, and select add to new pop-up. The pop-up parameter is so cool and I need to make a fully dedicated video covering all of its features, but for today, we're gonna keep it nice and short and I'll just show you how to do some of the simple basics. At the top, you'll notice that our pop-up is set to snapshot one. Let's go ahead and rename that to position A. Then we can go ahead and click on that and go down to snapshot two and rename that to be position B. Any changes we make to the pop-up with any parameters that are down here at the bottom will automatically change whenever we make a new selection. So with position B selected, 
find your mask source, click on this down arrow and select reset mask. And you'll notice now that I can choose between having position A, which automatically masks to wherever that line is, or position B to where there is no mask at all. Additionally, I don't want this line to appear on underlying clips. We only want it on the topmost clip. So going to our line, let's go into the properties and find our opacity slider. Clicking on the down arrow, we'll go to add to rig, find the rig, which is our pop-up we created. Then jumping inside of that pop-up, we can see our line opacity is set to 100% on position B. Let's go ahead and set that to 0%. So now if we go back to position A, the line appears, but if we go to position B, the line is no longer there. Finally, let's go to snapshot three and go ahead and click on this minus button to completely remove that option. I'm gonna set it back to position A as that is the first most option I want to always be selected. Let's rename this pop-up to be position. Then we'll go over here and click on this hidden down arrow and push publish so that we can change these controls over inside of Final Cut Pro. Finally, let's find the on-screen control position for the effect source and just set that to zero. And then we may wanna offset our line just a little bit. So I'll I'll just click and drag on that X parameter so that it's a little bit off to the side. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and push Command S to save or to publish into Final Cut Pro, and we'll just call it split screen effect. After that, we can go into our categories and find whichever category you like. I'll throw it into tutorials and push publish. Here in Final Cut Pro, we can go ahead and just apply our first clip onto the timeline. Then we can go over to our effects browser. I'll scroll down to the category that we've created, which was tutorials. And in here, we should see our split screen effect. I'll go ahead and click and drag to apply that onto our video. And if we push play, you'll notice that it's cut off that left side edge and we can adjust the final position of our line. We can also adjust the final position of our video. So now it slides over really nicely. Then if we want a video clip to the left, we'll just click and drag that underneath in the timeline. We could of course just use the transform tool to move it into position if we wanted to. But if you wanted to have a nice subtle animation, we could again apply that split screen effect onto it and we'll change the position from position A over to position B. Now we can go ahead and just slide this over to the left-hand side. And if we push play, it will have a nice animation happening to it. Of course, inside of Apple Motion, you could publish all your parameters such as the width or even the color. And if you wanted to get really crazy, you could even change the brush type so that people can have some hand-drawn effects or something for their lines. It's really up to you how you want this effect to look and to make it as customizable as you can for Final Cut Pro. So if this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you five powerful effects that are inside of Apple Motion that you really need to know about. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.